Hello, welcome back to my uh, wild garden. Uh, so it's the 30th of July, it just happens to be my birthday and uh, it's a glorious day. Um, we haven't had too many this summer, um, but it's, it's this time of year should be kind of peak insect, you know, when uh, insect populations are pretty much as good as they're going to get. And uh, obviously it's been a pretty rubbish year for for insects, the, the internet's uh, been awash with people saying they can't see any bees, they can't see any butterflies. It hasn't been a great year, I have to say. Possibly, time will tell, uh, but I would guess for butterflies and bumblebees, possibly the worst year um, ever. But there's still quite a lot around and it's making a bit of a recovery in this, in this uh, beautiful weather we're having. So I thought you might like to be cheered up by seeing what, uh, what beast is can be found in my garden. So I'm gonna take you on a tour of some of the highlights I've filmed in the last day or so. Follow me. Let's start with a little look at the, uh, the herbaceous beds near the house. And the marjoram is looking great. Covered in honeybees, hundreds of them. I don't know whether you can hear, see and hear them. But trust me, they're there. And we've got some anthemis. Lavender, of course, is a classic. More bumbles on this than honeybees. These are common carders. There's a honeybee. Looking beautiful. And further along, we've got this uh, everlasting sweet pea, which is starting to go over now, but it's uh, a perennial rather than a... Uh, the, it's very similar to sweet pea, which is an annual, but this is a perennial, and it's really popular with leaf cutters. There's one here. It seems to be one of their favourite foods at the moment. There we go. I hope she's in focus right now. And, uh, gorgeous. They seem to really like this everlasting, uh, everlasting pea. We'll leave her to it. Uh, just got these steps here. This is a penstemon. Alcia. Everything's looking a little bit tired because of the heat. It's a future which I spotted in the garden centre, had several bumblebees on it, so I bought one. But I haven't seen I haven't seen much visiting it. Bugle. We'll come back to that later. Uh, this is I love this, the Lictrum uh, Splendide it is. And this is a native wildflower. Uh, small scabious. It seems to do really well in this garden and is a good one for the bees. There's a couple of honeybees on here at the moment. And we shouldn't forget the evening primrose which seeds itself and pops up. These glorious flowers just last one day. They open in the evening and wilt the next afternoon. But it produces a steady succession. Right, let's look over here. Got a rather lovely white verbascum here, which actually is looking a bit sad now. It was lovely a week or two ago. This is good. This is canary clover. Uh, Lotus hirsuta, I think, the Latin name. It's a Mediterranean plant, but uh, really popular with bumblebees, although right now <laughs> I'm struggling to see any, but you'll have to trust me. It is, particularly common carders. There's these nice creamy pea flowers. And then we've got the teasel at the back, look. Lovely again, native biennial. Very tall, statuesque plant, and of course it's fab for seeds birds over the winter if you leave the, the deadheads. 
Again, no bees on it at the moment, but it is a great bee plant. Okay, let's leave the house and uh, head into the jungle up these steps. This is... Uh, <laughs> um, don't know quite how to describe this bit of the garden. It's somewhat overgrown in a, in a majestic and beautiful kind of way. It's a higgledy-piggledy mix of well, hogweed more than anything, which I think is magnificent. Got a woolly thistle here, which is just beginning to flower. Uh, lots of ragwort. And some marjoram. Meadowsweet. But mostly hogweed. Lots and lots of hogweed. And it's alive with insects. Absolutely buzzing. If it weren't for the plane flying overhead, you'd be able to hear them. Let's go a bit further up. And then we can go into the jungle a bit. You might get an idea of just how tall these plants have grown this year. Everything seems to have loved the, the rain and the humid cool conditions. So these hogweeds are eight feet tall, well above my head, and we've got willow herbs as well, with a, and the ragwort, which is taller than me. But this hogweed is just, just buzzing. So we've got a, there's a pied hopperfly up there, a drone fly up there, lots of flies of all sorts, lots of Lots of insects of all sorts. I hope you can get the general impression. I'm holding my camera high above my head to try and get an overview. But uh, certainly uh, not everyone's cup of tea, this level of um, vegetation, but I think it's amazing. I'm lucky to have room for such a jungle. This rather handsome wasp is Dolico Vespula media, I think. It's a while since I've looked at my wasps, but uh, we'll go with that. Absolute beauty. Many people don't realise that wasps are really important pollinators. My Bramley apples are swelling. But uh, not ready yet, they, they'll be ready to harvest in October, but it looks like being a, a good harvest this year. These are my first, first eaters of the year, uh, Lord Lambourne. It, uh, it's pretty good to have your own homegrown apples in the uh, third week of July. Can't complain at that. They're not absolutely my favourite apple, if I'm honest, but they're pretty good. I made this haystack last year as a, <coughs> as a kind of residence for wildlife, um, hoping bumblebees would nest in it. Um, there's some evidence that bumblebees used to nest in old haystacks when they were common in farmers' fields. But instead of a bumblebee nest, I've got a hornet nest. Uh, if we just wait for a second. This hole right in front is where they're coming and going. So this is the native European hornet, Vespa cabro. And uh, oh, there's one buzzing around. Uh, it's, there's, oh, there's a couple, three just come out. Splendid insects, aren't they? Amazing beasties. Not to be uh, don't be concerned if you get a hornet nest in your garden. I've got two. Another one in a, a swift nest box on top of a chimney. Oh, I've got a hornet buzzing around my head now. It won't sting me. They're, uh, they're very placid beasties. Ah, look what I've spotted in this evening primrose flower. That's a speckled bush cricket. I love bush crickets. 
this the speckled bush cricket is a has vestigial wings, so tiny wings that don't work. It's quite a chubby little cricket, and you see they have these very long antennae, uh, one of which is cocked back, so you can't really see it, but one of which hopefully you can see. Lovely, charming little creatures. I do have quite a lot of ragwort in my garden and I make no apologies for that. Native wildflower, absolutely beautiful and really good for insects, although again I have to apologise there aren't many on here today. But in a, in a normal year it's really good for insects. And isn't that a beautiful, beautiful flower? It seeds fairly readily, so it doesn't need much encouraging. but. Uh, I don't find it takes over my garden at all. A few pop up every year, but not so many as to be a problem. And uh, of course, it's famously poisonous um, to livestock, and particularly horses. But that's only a problem if you dry it and make it into hay and then feed it to horses, which is a pretty dumb thing to do. Um, the horses, if it's growing in a horse paddock, they just won't, uh, won't touch it. Oh, there's a rare bumblebee sighting over here. Oh, that's a very late, early bumblebee, if that makes sense. Um, normally, early bumblebees are finished by July, so they do have a partial second brood, and I would guess this, so this is a worker. I would guess it's from a second brood, but it's the only one I've seen in weeks, so there can't be many of them around. Anyway, ragwort, beautiful plant. Every garden should have some in my view. This beauty is a, a cinnabar moth caterpillar that eats the ragwort. One of the many benefits of growing ragworts is you get these gorgeous stripy caterpillars. There's quite a few on here. Looks like being a good year for cinnabars. Uh, they sequester the poison from the ragwort in their bodies and uh, make themselves poisonous and then they advertise that they're poisonous by the, with the bright stripes. Same pattern used by wasps of course. Sort of universal, don't eat me, I'm dangerous. Yellow and black stripes. Bindweed, bit of a pest but uh, also a glorious flower. Very handsome, though it does do its best to take over my vegetable patch, so I have to keep an eye on it. Look at this giant uh, plant. This is a, a cardoon, a traditional Victorian leaf vegetable, though well, the stems are eaten. But I grow it for the bees. And this one must be 10 feet tall. It's just starting to flower. Um, two big, it's related to thistles and the like, see, these giant sort of thistle-like flowers. I can just about see some small bees on that. Normally it's, a, it's an absolute uh, magnet for bumblebees. And uh, this is going to be glorious. Obviously uh, thriving. It's a close relative of the artichoke, which also has, in fact, even bigger flowers, uh, which you can cook and eat if you pick them before they open. Uh, the cardoon stems are not so great to eat, I have to say. Uh, it's hardly worth growing for human consumption, but definitely worth growing for bees. This is spear thistle, beautiful native flower. Uh, it's a biennial, I think. It certainly doesn't flower in its first year, and I think it usually dies in its second. Uh, very popular with bees. You get a lot of leaf cutter bees on this. There is a common carder bumblebee. A rare sighting at the moment. Nice to see. Let's have a look over here at the veggie patch, see what's going on. It's certainly thriving this year with all the rain we've had. 
haven't needed to water anything. I think it's looking rather magnificent. It's got rhubarb, runner beans, leeks, horseradish, parsnips, loads of onions, asparagus and so on and so on. All mixed up with some wildflowers. Fab. Ah, now look, let's go and have a look on the onions. Uh, sorry, the flowering leeks. These are last year's leeks that I left to flower. And I can see a comma and a red admiral butterfly, which is pretty cool. These, these are really good for butterflies. Well, hopefully you can see the comma. One of my favorite butterflies, look at that. Amazing things, trying to look like a dead leaf, I guess. And you can see why it's called a comma. It's got that little white mark on the, on the wing. On the hind wing there, looks a bit like a comma. Gorgeous insects. And just over to the left, we have a red admiral. Look at that. Not been a good year for red admirals, but there's one here at least. Huh. And there's honeybees and hoverflies and all sorts on here. Definitely a top tip for encouraging insects. Let your leeks flower. I've got several runner bean wigwams. Love runner beans. Fantastic when they, if you pick them young and fresh. But, uh, but to start with, they didn't set. The flowers were just dropping off because they weren't being visited by anything. But uh, just in the last few days, I've noticed some beans starting to appear. Uh, some little baby beans there, which in a, just a few days will swell to an edible size. Uh, runner beans are mainly pollinated by long-tongued bumblebees, Bombus hortorum and Bombus pascorum. That's the garden bumblebee and the common carder bumblebee. So at least we've got enough to get some beans, which is, which is good. There's actually something interesting here before we move on. Runner beans normally have leaves the whole way up, but there's been such a terrible year for slugs that uh, you see these the stems are completely bare um, up to about four feet tall. The slugs were climbing up the stems and up the bamboo, coals, co bamboo poles at night and just stripping the plants. I lost most of my runner beans. I had to keep replanting them, but eventually some got tall enough that the slugs can't be bothered to climb this high. And now the tops of them are are thriving, but it was a battle. Hello girls, how you doing? I'm hoping for the kitchen scraps. I'll bring them later. Yes, well said. There's a meadow brown and a gatekeeper having a fight here. <laughs> And there's a ringlet over here too, let me, so all three of those butterflies, ringlet, meadow brown and gatekeeper are related members of the brown family. So that's a gatekeeper that just flew in. But right in front of us is a ringlet. Pretty obvious why it's called a ringlet, if you can see it clearly. So it has these gorgeous rings on the wings. See how close we can get before she flies off. There you go. It's a little scarcer than the meadow brown and the gatekeeper. But we have them breeding in the garden here. Caterpillars feed on grass. There's no shortage of that. I'm not sure which species they prefer there. Clearly whichever one it is, we've got some. Oh, she's being very docile for us. Hmm. Here's a, a gatekeeper, a sort of orange relative of the meadow brown. Nice little 
little butterflies. This one's trying to warm up because the sun's gone in. Hopefully that's in focus for you. Very pretty little things. Common in gardens and more of a meadow edge and sort of woodland ride hedgerow uh, insect than an open meadow insect. But, uh, Dear little things. Oh, that's being very, very obliging. Okay, let's head back towards the house now, see what else we've missed. Solar panels are doing a fine job today in the sunshine, helping to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, okay, so let's have a look what we can find in the lawn. This is one of the most sort of, gets mown two or three times a year, so lawn is perhaps not the best description, but uh, it's a bit of room for table tennis. And uh, uh, you get slightly different flowers and insects on the shorter grass. It's definitely uh, not a bad idea to have some shorter areas if you can. You don't want it all cut once a year. It's a honeybee feeding on the white clover growing in the lawn. The white clover seems to like the, the bits of lawn that are mown moderately regularly. It uh, doesn't doesn't thrive in really long grass. Classic uh, favourite of shorter-tongued bees like honeybees. Of course, makes a nice honey. One of the joys of an unmown lawn and a grasshoppers that'll turn up if you're lucky. There's, uh, there's one straight ahead, there are elusive little blighters, hard to film. Let's see how we do with this one. I think he's in focus. I can hear some others singing around me. And they're always well camouflaged. Tricky little things to spot as you can see. Gorgeous. Many a happy hour spent as a kid trying to catch grasshoppers in my hands. Yeah. It's a large skipper butterfly, a male, perched on a grass head. Territorial little blighter. Been chasing every other butterfly away on this patch of the lawn. Tell it's a male because he's got a black sort of streak on the upper side of his forewing which are apparently scent scales producing pheromones. Hopefully. Is he in focus? Oh, I hope you got a chance to see it before I frightened him off. Lovely little butterflies, rather endearing. The yellow rattle is finally setting seed now. The seed pods are dried out, so it rattles as, as it should to live up to its name. And when I do that, seeds get thrown out in all directions, just mimicking a bit of wind, I suppose. And, uh, and there's seed just landed on my thumb. Hopefully those will germinate in the spring after a being exposed to some winter frosts and I'll get a good crop of yellow rattle again next year. Fingers crossed. Uh, here is a small skipper. A smaller version of the large skipper as you might guess. It's uh, perching there on that mouse ear head. Lovely little butterfly. The 
There we go, should be nice and sharp in focus. Until she flew away at least. He flew away I should say. This is a blue spot damselfly, one of our smaller damselflies. Uh, you can see why it's called a blue spot damselfly. I'm hoping that's focused on the insect. Gorgeous little creatures. I love damselflies and dragonflies. This is one of our less spectacular species, but still lovely. This is a, a common green shield bug. As the name suggests, it's fairly common and it's green. There is a similar species, the southern green shield bug, but uh, it's not so common and it has um, white spots on its back, which I can't see, so I guess it's the common one. Nice little chap. Whoa, off he goes. Ah, I've just spotted a Himalayan balsam that I haven't yet yanked out. Damn stuff keeps seeding from, well, I'm not quite sure where, but it, it's a terrible invasive weed. It's beautiful and the bees love it. Seems a shame to kill it, but it will completely take over the world given half a chance. Um, anyway, oh, let's have a look in the greenhouse. This Persic area is rather nice. It's going to be warm in here. But I just thought you might be interested to see how it's coming along. If you remember what it looked like six weeks ago when I last videoed in here. It's... Uh, the tomatoes are doing rather well. Look, these are yellow memes. Very sweet yellow tomatoes. And uh, Tom is a overhead height now. The grapes are going to be really productive this year. You can see there are bunches and bunches of grapes. Not quite ripe yet, but they get really sweet a bit later on. And uh, we've got agretti, which is an interesting salad vegetable. Um, yin yang beans, which are rather delicious. Uh, tree spinach. Peppers. All sorts, but it's so hot I'm going to have to get out of here. Let's have a little look around the front of the house. See how things are doing through this kind of uh, shady dell. And look here, I love this Helianthus, it's a North American sunflower perennial and uh, bees and butterflies love it too. And uh, you can see we've got a, it's a couple of gatekeepers chasing each other around here, honeybees and so on, isn't that lovely? I hope you enjoyed that little little tour around the garden. So, I mean, to sum up, it's not been a great year for insects. Um, I, I really worried about the, why peacock numbers are down so much, red admirals, painted ladies, and so on, the colorful butterflies that are usually adorning our buddleia bushes at this time of year. And some bumblebee species seem to be much scarcer than, than I would expect them to be. But nonetheless, there's a lot going on. And it's heartening to see life can thrive in a garden. Um, I guess the, you know, the big picture, of course, is that uh, insects are declining globally, um, estimated to be down one or two percent a year, and it just goes relentlessly on year after year. Um, and, and as well as tackling, you know, making our gardens more insect friendly, we need to, 
we need to push our politicians to, to, to take action at national and international level to tackle habitat loss and climate change and um, light pollution and all the many other issues that insects face. But if we all do our bit in our gardens, it will really help. And uh, I would urge you all to, to get planting, get growing flowers that are bee friendly, wildlife friendly, native wildflowers, wherever you can. And uh, invite nature into your garden and it really does help. Okay, until next time, see you soon.